Hi and welcome. So let's discuss the question Saif, Shafina and their friendship. Fine. So it is given that we have a string. Okay, this is denoted by S. The string is formed by T1 plus some T, uh, T2 plus T3 plus T4. Okay, where this T1 and T2 are exactly same. That is T1 plus T1. Okay, T1 plus T1. And this T3, T4 are same. That is T3 plus T2 plus T2. Fine, like this. So these two strings uh, are same and these two strings are same and when we can combine we get an S. There can be a possibility that we do not actually get any uh, get an S. So therefore in that particular case the answer will be 0. Fine. So we need to find out a given a string how many how many such T1 and T2 combinations are possible. Fine. So find the number of ways in which chef can retrieve the valid strings T1 and T2 from the given S. Okay. It is possible that chef does not remember S correctly. So therefore in that case the answer will be simply 0. Now for example if we are having A, B, C, D, A, B, C, D and we need to divide this into 4 strings. Okay. Because it will be T1 plus T1 plus T2 plus T2 that means 4 strings. So obviously uh, T1 let's say it is A, T2 will be B, T3 will be C and T4 will be D. Now obviously these two are not same. T1 plus these two should be same and these two should be same. Okay. So obviously these two are not same. Therefore for this particular case the answer is simply 0. Fine. If we see this now T1 is A, T2 is A, T3 is A, T4 is A. So T1 equals to T2 and T3 equals to T4 and when we combine we get A, 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 A. So yes the answer yes it is. We can have just one possibility in this particular case. Fine. Now if we see the third case. Now let's see the third one. So in this particular case, so there are many possibilities for T1, T2, T3, T4, correct? So we can have T1 as A and T2 as now T1 should be equal to T2. T1 should be equal to T2. So therefore the length of both T1, T2 should be same and the not just the length, the character should also be same. Fine. Correct. So similarly for T3, T4. T3 equals to T4 should be there. So the length and the character should be the same. So if T1 is A, T2 possibility uh, which can be B. But this is not there. Character is different. Okay. So T2 cannot be B. So let's change T1. Let's have T1 as B. So T2 can be AB. So T1 is this and T2 is this. So they both are same in length and character. Now if we go for T3, T3 can be CDC, correct? And T4 can be this CDC, correct? So they are same in length and character. So therefore T1 equal to equal to T2 and T3 equal to equal to T4. And when we combine T1 plus T2 plus T3 plus T4, we get AB, AB, CDC and CDC, okay? CDC and CDC, which is nothing but equal to S. So is there any other possibility of the combination? No, there is just one single way. So therefore the answer of this particular case is 1. Fine. So it is nothing but 0, 1, 1, the sample test case outputs. Okay. So we need to find a number of ways possible uh, to make the T1, T2, T3 and T4 and combine them to get a S value. Fine. Okay. So I have already told you one important point that T1 needs to be equal to equal to T2 and T3 needs to be equal to equal to T4. So therefore the length should exactly be same and also that is given that the length of S that is the string that is given to us will be even. Fine. So when we combine all this we should get an even length. So, okay. So we are combining T1 plus T2. It should be of even length and when we are combining T3 plus T4 it should be of even length. Correct. So even plus even will give me a uh, total length of even as well. Fine. Okay. Now since we need an even length. Fine. So for every even index if we divide for every even index for example if the string that is given to us is this only 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 and 9 and the string that was given to us is a b fine so if we divide at each particular index from starting from i equals to 2 if we divide at each particular index so let's say i equals to 2 fine so from till i equals to 2 what can be the possibilities of t1 uh, and t2 so t1 can be uh, from that, that is nothing but a and t2 can be b fine so we length we are now just uh, comparing the length so t1 and t2 we have same lengths correct now from 2 to 9 we can divide it into two other strings that will make me t3 and t4 of equal lengths correct from 2 3 4 5 we can have a string and from 6 7 8 9 we can have another string so a b c d and c c d c 
now their lengths are same now we can easily compare if t1 equal to equal to t2 and t3 equal to equal to t4 in that case we can increment the count by one count plus plus correct if they are not same now again do the same thing this increment for each and every even index we are doing because we need even partitions so for each and every even index let's say for i equals to 4 now plus 2 what will be the values of t1 t2 t3 and t4 so from 0 to 3 we are going to divide so t1 will be a b and t2 will be a b correct now 4 to 9 we need to divide so 4 5 6 will be one length and 7 8 9 will be another length so it is c d c and c d c correct uh odd plus odd is even so now what we can simply do is just compare if t1 equal to equal to t2 yes and t3 equal to equal to t4 yes that means we can join them and we will get a value of s because it is division of s only so therefore we are simply incrementing the count in that particular case fine right? now we need to do this for all even lengths even indexes because the count can be anything in different cases so let's do for i equals to six when we do for i equals to 6, so this is one particular length and this is another 6 length. So it is A, B, A and B, C, D. And for 6, 7, we get one this one as T3 and this one as T4. C, C, D, C. So their lengths are same. We just need to compare for the character. So therefore, just compare. If the strings are equal, then increment the count. Else, do not increment the count. And similarly, for i equals to 9, uh, 8. Correct? So this is how we are going to approach this particular question. So for each and every index, if we are just seeing our string, okay. So t1 is nothing but from 0 to i by 2 minus 1, correct. So t1, if i is 2, so 2 by 2 means 1, 1 minus 1 is 0. So t1 is this, when i was 2, correct. When i was 4, so it is 4 by 2 is 2, 2 minus 1 is 1. So this was my t1, okay. And this was my t2. So what was t2? t2 was nothing but, nothing but i by 2 comma i minus 1, okay. This substring, this substring is t1, this substring is t2 always. What is t3? The substring of t3 is given to us by i to what? So if i value was 2, so substring is 2, 3, 4, 5, 2, 3, 4, 5. So how do you calculate this value? It is nothing but i plus n by 2, okay, minus 1. And t4 is nothing but i plus n by 2, 2, n minus 1, correct? So if uh, it is 2, 2 plus n is 10, 10 by 2 is 6. So 6 minus 1 is 5. So we are getting till here. And then from 6 to n minus 1 is the next particular substring. Fine. So if you just find these four substrings and compare them for each and every possibility of i, even possibility of i, okay, uh, compare them, increment the count, we should get the answer. Okay, I'm not saying that it is a, it is not a efficient approach, but this is the first logic that we can easily see. Okay, for just get the values of t1, t2, t3, t4 uh, for each and every of these possible substrings. Fine, and uh, then compare them. If they are equal, then increment the count. Else, not increment the count. Okay. So, uh, using the if you are using the substr function, so substr function takes two variables in C++. So that depends on the language that you are using. But I am just saying that you have to get these substrings for each and every particular value of i. Okay. So let's see the code for this uh, substring method, and then we can move to the optimized approach. Okay, so this is a simple small code for the uh, optimized method, uh, sorry, substring method. So count equals to 0. Now i equals to 2 for each and every even index. Okay, for t1 we get the substring from 0 to i by 2. Now just remember the substring method works differently in different languages. Fine. Here they tell what is the starting index and how many length you want. So therefore the values inside are changing. Okay, what is the starting index and how many length you want. That is written. Fine. T2, I starting index is i by 2, I, I, and I want i by 2 length. T3, starting index is i, I, and I want this much length to be included. T4, uh, this is the starting index, and this much length I want. Fine. Once we get T1, T2, T3, T4, just compare T1 equals to T2, and T3 equals to T4, increment the count, and print it. Fine. So that depends on the language that you are using. Fine. How, to, how, how will you get the substring? Okay. So, but obviously, substring method is order of n complexity. So this will definitely go to order of n square, and we need to somehow optimize it. Fine. So let's see that. Now uh, to optimize it, the prerequisite is nothing but uh, you can we can use KMP. In KMP, there is a uh, prefix function. Okay. So this is nothing but longest prefix, which is also a suffix LPS. Fine. So uh, for the paid student, if you are watching this, so 
uh, this is present uh, KMP is present in your lectures and we can also use the string hashing function rolling hash function to solve this particular one okay so this rolling hash function so let's just see this part so I am just going to briefly explain uh, tell you what uh, what does in a rolling hash function so in a rolling hash function just briefly because this is nothing but a prerequisite for this particular question so uh, in a in a hash function what we are doing for each and every prefix of this particular string okay okay just uh, from the beginning in a string hash function what we are doing we are going to represent each string by an integer value fine we are going to, in a string hash function uh, using a hash function obviously we convert each string and we represent it using a integer value fine now if we have t1 and t2 and if we get the hash values of t1 and t2 if they are same that means the strings are same fine that that is how we implement the hash function so this is a pre-computation this is a pre-computation okay for each particular substring of our hash we get the hash values fine and when we get this t1 and t2 fine we just simply get the hash values of t1 t2 and compare them that will take just order of one time okay so therefore this is a prerequisite for this particular question fine uh, for each and every string we map it to some hash values some integer values using the hash functions and when we need this sub particular substrings so instead of getting the substrings we get the hash values of the substrings okay what is the hash value from 0 to the, of the substring from 0 to i by 2 okay we do this this is let's say l this is let's say r and what is the hash value between these two so we get this in just a single order of one fine and the comparison is also in order of one so we have to do this particular pre-computation fine so this is just the brief idea what happens in a hash so let's see uh, the that particular code now okay because if uh, the whole explanation will take another full video okay this will become too long so let's see the implementation so in this particular case uh, this is same we take a string with n equals to string length count now this is the pre-computation that we are going to see and then uh, here what we are going to do t1 t2 t3 t4 instead of now strings they are nothing but integers fine we get the hash value from 0 to i, I by 2 minus 1 then from I, this is the same that i have written i by 2 to i minus 1 now there is no substring method so therefore these are nothing but the l and r value okay exactly that uh, was written before from i to i plus n by 2 minus 1 and this here so we get t1 t2 t3 t4 for all even indexes we compare them if they are equal count plus plus as else not so instead of substring method now there is a get hash function okay and this is the hash function uh, hash rolling hash function uh, this code fine uh, so this is calculate you can just write any function is this this is nothing but the pre-calculation pre-computation fine and uh, so in this but so in this particular one there, there is a hash array and there is a power array which is used to calculate this hash function okay p is nothing but an or and prime value correct so since in this we just have lower values there is lowercase values we take p is equal to 31 suppose if you have uppercase values and lowercase values also then i think p equals to 53 uh, will be more useful that means uh, 26 plus 26 is 52 so another uh, after 52 uh, what uh, the prime number is that is used so after 26 the prime number that we are using here is 31 fine so that is how the p is written here okay and this mode is used to calculate the power because obviously the power will go above range max is nothing but 10 to the power of 5 so it will go range of uh, 10 to, it will cross 10 to the power 18 easily so therefore we are using the mode here fine so this is nothing but for the hash function okay and the get hash function is used just used to get the values uh, for passing the values of l the left range and the right range here okay so that is a totally a complete different video that is just algorithm that is just used here in this one and obviously we can also use our kmp algorithm fine okay so yeah this will be accepted fine thank you